So we're going to shift now into the more hardcore verses. Okay, so you ready? <laughs> All right, so back to Oscar. Feeling really stable in your seat. Allowing any tension that is built up to dissolve. And shifting your focus back to the breath. Just very gentle awareness. Letting focus on the breath sharpen up your attention without adding any kind of tightness or stress. A calm watching. As your mind settles, refresh your bodhicitta motivation. Let bodhicitta imbue your mind. Orient the rest of the practice. and shift to analysis. So now we'll think about some of Dharma Rakshita's words in the Wheel of Sharp Weapons. And so just let these thoughts swirl around in your mind. See what lands, see what challenges, see what inspires. He says, and thus bodhisattvas are likened to peacocks. They live on delusions, those poisonous plants, transforming them into the essence of practice. They thrive in the jungle of everyday life. Whatever is presented, they always accept while destroying the poison of clinging desire. Uncontrollable wandering through rounds of existence is caused by our grasping at egos as real. This ignorant attitude heralds the demon of selfish concern for our welfare alone. We seek some security for our own egos. We only want pleasure and shun any pain. But now we must banish all selfish compulsion and gladly take hardship for all others' sake. So just let those thoughts become like an impetus for Tonglen practice. Before you actually do Tonglen, just getting motivated. We want to be like bodhisattvas, which are analogous to peacocks. 
who are said to eat poison, and it only makes them more beautiful. Similarly, bodhisattvas take on the hardship of everyday life, and it only makes them kinder and stronger. We can become like this. The only reason we are not is self-grasping and self-cherishing. So just let your will arise to eliminate these. One of the best ways is through Tonglen. And then strengthening our wish to do Tonglen even more, we think all of our sufferings derive from our habits of selfish delusions we heed and act out. As all of us share in this tragic misfortune, which stems from our narrow and self-centered ways, we must take all our sufferings and the miseries of others and smother our wishes of selfish concern, or rob them of fuel. Selfish concern is why we suffer. It's why we act out in ways that harm others. And it's perfectly normal and perfectly natural, but that does not mean that it's necessary. In fact, it's actually harmful. And so we just hear Dhammarakshita's words in our mind as a directive that we must practice Tonglen. See if you can allow yourself to deeply want to do this practice. And so now we actually do Tonglen. And so connect with giving on the out breath, visualize golden light. With loving kindness, you offer your past, present and future happiness. Connect with taking on the in breath, visualize black smoke with compassion, Take the past, present, and future suffering. And as you bring in black smoke, you give it to the self-cherishing, smothering and destroying it, dissolving it. As you breathe out golden light, you're freed from your attachment to all your happiness and causes of happiness. Letting it go, it comes back to you anyway, but now purified of ego and self-cherishing. So just allow that visualization to stabilize. Breathing in black smoke, giving it to self-cherishing, breathing out golden light, Cherishing others. Just with your natural rhythm of breathing.
And you can start in a general or generic sense of taking on suffering and giving over happiness. Or you can start with your own personal issues that you're struggling with right now and then gradually expand them. And so when we do giving and taking with ourself, we can think, as Dharma Rakshita says, when our bodies are aching and racked with great torment of dreadful diseases we cannot endure, this is the wheel of sharp weapons returning, full circle upon us from wrongs we have done. Till now we have injured the bodies of others. Hereafter, let's take on what sickness is theirs. Depressed and forlorn when we feel mental anguish, this is the wheel of sharp weapons returning, full circle upon us from wrongs we have done. Till now, we have deeply disturbed the minds of others. Hereafter, let's take on this suffering ourselves. Breathing in the suffering physically and mentally, giving it to the self-cherishing thought. Breathing out golden light, the happiness, comfort, and well-being of our body, the peace, insight, and intelligence, joy of our mind. Allowing this counterintuitive process to dissolve layers of self-cherishing habit. freeing up our good heart, allowing others to access and benefit from it. Breathing in black smoke, breathing out golden light. Breathing in loving kindness, breathing out compassion. Breathing in, destroying self-cherishing. Breathing out, cherishing others. Just connect with other, with whichever aspect of these concepts is resonating for you today. Breathing in the suffering of body and mind, we can also breathe in the suffering from harsh and critical words, giving those to our self-cherishing thought. When we hear only language that is foul and abusive, this is the wheel of sharp weapons, returning full circle upon us from wrongs we have done. Till now we have said many things without thinking. We have slandered, and caused many friendships to end. Hereafter, let's censure all thoughtless remarks. Breathing in, giving to the self-cherishing, weakening it. Breathing out, cherishing others, expansive and warm.
and then think, in short, then, whenever unfortunate sufferings we haven't desired crash upon us like thunder. This is the same as the smith who had taken his life with a sword he had fashioned himself. Our sufferings, the wheel of sharp weapons returning, full circle upon us from wrongs we have done. Hereafter, let's always have care and awareness, never to act in non-virtuous ways. A few more breaths, breathing in black smoke, breathing out golden light. And then just with one more in-breath, imagine that your self-cherishing is fully dissolved and let go of the visualization of black smoke. Now only focus on the out-breath, only giving out golden light. And as you focus on the giving side of Tonglen, you can think of Shantideva's words, may all beings everywhere, plagued with sufferings of body and mind, obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by virtue of my merits. Breathing out the golden light of all your merits, past, present, and future. Dispelling the suffering of all sentient beings and bringing them happiness. Adopting this attitude. Then think that all of the light forms a cloud around you and reabsorbs through your pores and you have all of your good karma and roots of virtue and merit but now it's been purified or filtered freed from its self-cherishing attitude freed from its attachment and expectation Now the happiness you have, you will see as fuel for the path to bring happiness to others, rather than hoarding it or clinging to it with miserliness. And through the power of these thoughts, may we become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. And relax your attention. Okay. So, of course, Wheel of Sharp Weapons is a little bit hardcore, but I know um, a few of you have studied it with me before, and I bet some of the rest of you have studied it in the past with other teachers. Um, if you haven't studied Wheel of Sharp Weapons and you're curious what it's all about, there's a really beautiful, accessible commentary by Dr. Alexander Burzen on the Study Buddhism website. So that's all free and easy to access if you're curious about that text.
how did that one go? We did a little bit more specific and direct Tonglen together with weaving in verses. Was it interesting? Was it difficult? Was it inspiring? How did it go? Um, when I first started it, uh, when I was breathing in, I got um, a huge amount, of, not a huge amount, but a lot of pain, physical pain <clears throat> in, in, in an area. And then breathing out, it was like relaxed. And breathing in and breathing it out. And then after a few minutes that went, you know, I could still breathe in the black smoke and breathe out the golden light and send out um, the temptation to um, sentient beings. But, and that settled down, that settled down in the second part of the meditation. Yeah, so that was the first time I've experienced that in that particular meditation. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's really interesting because I know you've done that meditation in the past and um, it is always kind of intriguing what triggers kind of an experiential, yeah. visceral kind of thing. Yeah, that's really interesting. But it, it, yeah, what do you make of it? What do you, what do you think that's about? Or is it still too soon to say? Uh, I think it's about self-grasping and about self-preservation and about you know, all those things really, yeah, and just letting that go, and having had a lifetime of that, it's not easy at this stage to let it all go, mm -hmm. yeah, I would think it would have been easy if I'd practiced it a lot earlier, however, uh, it is what it is, and um, just keep on, keep on, it'll get less and less, hopefully, and uh, yeah, maybe another few lifetimes. <laughs> I, I think sometimes that you're in the best possible position because you know you're you're going so deeply at the later period of your life it seems much more likely that you'll take it with you to your next life and pick up where you left off I think a lot of people are very inspired about the spiritual path in their late teens and early 20s and are you know whatever dharma bums traveling the world doing their thing and then you know they settle down and they kind of forget about it you know, and it sort of then disperses and maybe they pick it up again in their 40s and 50s and then they get distracted and worry about retirement, you know, and then if they're lucky, they pick it up again in the last part of their life. But a lot of people don't, you know, so I think that um, may we all live up to your example. I think it's uh, to really give so much energy to this at the last part of your life is so important because it's going to link you to your next life and you can just pick up where you left off. You know, oh, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah. you know, we're all we're all the same age, really, cosmically, right? Beginning this time. So <laughs> it would have gone better if we'd all done this earlier. But anyway, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Yeah. <laughs> better, yeah. better late than never. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. There are there other thoughts about that one? The the poetry and the imagery can be um confronting or inspiring I, I always like the part about you know um if we continue to act this a little bit like killing ourselves on a sword we made ourselves you know mm -hmm. <laughs> the smith's kind of falling on his own sword you know or the wheel of sharp weapons returning you know it's like this is what we sent to ourselves because of self-cherishing and so it, it's kind of um for me it's empowering you know, to think, oh, right, this is the mess I created. This is also the mess I can s sort out with my same mind that created this mess. I can find the solution. And um, if I don't have to look for who's to blame besides self-cherishing, it saves so much time. <laughs> you know, um, you know, sometimes we're trying to hunt through our past, maybe our family of origin issues, the way we grew up and our parents and we can point to certain habits that we learned from them that were maybe not so useful, as well as habits we learned from them that we really cherish. Um, maybe we can point to things in our past that were traumatic or tragic and say, that's why I am how I am. And that is true to a point, but we have to remember that those are conditions, not the substantial cause. And we can fall into the trap of thinking, if I just could figure out the why of everything in my life, then I could relax, be at peace and be integrated, you know, 
if I could figure out why I do this and why I do that and who taught me this and where did this come from, it's like there's no end to it because you're talking about beginningless time. And if you don't believe in beginningless time, you can believe in, you know, the ancestral line of human beings, you know. And when did human beings start hurting each other and why, <laughs> you know, and how did all of those habits navigate through your family line to you and how it manifests in your own family. It's like you could never trace it all the way back. Um, what you do know is that all suffering comes from self grasping and self cherishing and that is still happening in our life. So if we start to nip that in the bud, then we're really going to be setting our future up very well. And that's the kindest legacy to leave to ourself as well as leaving to our family and our family line is to start to change the culture and the habits within our family system as well as within ourselves. So, so maybe it's um, useful to keep thinking all of this trouble. Sure, there are conditions from my past which inform this. However, <laughs> the substantial cause was my own mind and its own you know, mistaken behaviors. So I have all the power to fix it. You know, it, it can land differently. It can land as, oh, that's too much work. That's too much pressure. That's too much responsibility. Try not to let it land that way. Let it land as, oh, good. Then I don't have to go hunting anywhere else. All of this came from you. <laughs> but don't think that it's your fault. It's not your fault. It's just your responsibility. You know, how does this land? Yeah, I like you will do it now and get it over with. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes think that when I have a bad headache or something, like, well, might as well have this now. <laughs> you know, let's just exhaust it and try not to cause any trouble in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we're we're getting a lot of good work done, and especially if you have refuge vows, if you have bodhisattva vows, if you have tantric vows, so much good work is just ticking along in the background there in terms of creating positive mental momentum all the time, even on a quiet day when not much is happening, you know, so so have some confidence that good work's getting done. Yeah, Christina? Yeah, isn't this probably one of the good things that's come out of the COVID isolation thing is we can do more dharma practice? Yeah, yeah, just logistically, there's more just space, you know, the very thing that um, is hard is the very thing that's making us sit still and kind of go inward. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So let's just, let me just check the time. Looks like, um, it looks like that's, that's it for tonight. Um, there's a few more meditations of that type on my channel if you want any more, but um, we might just um, go ahead and dedicate now. Oh, Say, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, so much to interrupt. Um, and I just wanted to offer on behalf of my Chita and Yangtze Rinpoche, great thanks to you, Venerable Yenten, for such skillful and warm and empathetic teaching. And um, please continue to teach with my Chita and lead practices and take classes with us and be part of our extended community wherever you are. And uh, thank you so much for so generously offering this Discovering Buddhism program for us all. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks more for asking. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I really appreciate it. So all of the merit, may it go to these ends. <laughs> May the precious view of emptiness that has not arisen arise and grow. May that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. 
a wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, the incomparably kind, supreme Tenzin Getso. May you have a long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Embodiment of the three divine refuges who blesses all. Gendon Tenzin, holder of the teachings, may your lifespan last for eternity. May your excellent deeds pervade all of time and space and continuously ripen for the nourishment of myself and others. And think that any of your other teachers also show the aspect of long life and good health. And may we always practice according to their perfect example. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Have a nice night, morning, <laughs> afternoon. <Yeah. laughs>